Hello and welcome to j -Hep and World of Ed's lesson on infrared spectroscopy or spectrometry. Um, this is suitable for AQA Unit 1 I think, but it's mainly on for OCR Unit 2, just because I'm on it. So, um, the first thing you just need to know is that all organic compounds absorb infrared radiation. Organic compounds, as you may remember, have carbon bonds and hydrogen okay usually they have carbon hydrogen and that's what makes them organic and usually they we find them in um, living things and so on and so forth so these all so for example this is um this is ethane this absorbs infrared radi radiation but in actual fact you'd think it was actually the um, atoms itself that absorb the infrared radi radiation, but it's not. It's actually the bonds that absorb it. And when they absorb it, what they do, they sh either stretch or bend. Because what my teacher told me, because I remembered this, is that bonds are like springs. And, uh, sorry, that's a poorly drawn out spring, but what happens is that when it's absorbing this radiation, it's just busy pulling apart, you know, buying in together like a slinky, and so on and so forth. So that's what, um, um, that's what, that's how it absorbs, well, that's it absorbing. And the thing is, with different bonds comes different frequencies in which to actually um, stretch it or it's, you know, absorbing. So for example, if you think about the glass, the old opera lady with the glass, you know, singing um, at a very high pitched sound, that is a frequency in which breaks you know, separates the bonds in which um, uh, shatters the glass. Uh, another thing is um, enthalpy as well, where you can use heat energy to actually, um, what's it, break bonds as well. But that's enthalpy. So, so for example, this C to C bond would actually um, absorb at a much less um, frequency than C to O say for example okay or it's um or much less than the c to h okay say for example and using ir spectroscopy and using the ir spectra as well the um the graph that we're going to have a look at we can actually detect what functional groups are within the organic compound and actually try to uh, um try to find out what compound it is so how does it work? This is a very, very um, interesting but badly drawn picture. And uh, how it works is that the infrared, um, the infrared radiation is split into two beams. Okay, so, you know, okay, that's, that's, that was supposed to be a light bulb or something. And what happens? It goes through the mirror. Draw, I shouldn't have done that. Um, it goes through the mirror. So one, two, and it passes through a thin air, which is used as a um, as a control, as a yeah, as or reference if you want to call it that. Um, it's used as a control to actually um, refer back to, well, for the um, infrared detector to refer back to when it's actually calculating and displaying all this absorption frequencies on the graph. Remember, even when you have lots of experiments, we usually use a control in order for us to actually, um, uh, in order for us to actually compare it to something. So it goes through, it goes through the sheet of the compound, as I like to call it, or just a sample, and the different, the different, uh, what's it, the different. Um, bonds would actually would absorb the uh, what's it would absorb the frequencies is well the infrared radiation that makes much more sense and then some of it is still passed through right so some of it is still passed through for the sake of um, my mirror being the incorrect position I'm just going to go upwards a bit and do it like that it usually goes in a straight line just saying um, and then it goes and bounces off the mirror, bounces off the other mirror, through um, sodium chloride. Oh, and this does the same as well. 
So three sodium chloride, where it's bounced off again. So I gave him a horrific drawing. And then into the infrared detector, where it compares the two, um, the two transmittances, as I should say, and then just compares it together. Um, so, and it displays it on the graph as well. So the reason why, one of the other reasons why we have this reference is because just imagine if the infrared, um, let's say if it's a bulb, and if the infrared, infrared bulb just dims a bit and then just goes back, you know how like old, old street lights are, they dim a bit and then they go back up. So if that happens, it actually won't disrupt the results because let's say that this has a night, this just went from 100% transmittance to a 98% transmittance, it would actually just, um, it wouldn't come up as an, as an anomaly, okay, because it's actually comparing both transmittances. So we've got these infrared um, spectra right here, okay, and I'm giving you this right now, it's called ethanol. And in your OCR or AQA, I'm not sure about AQA, but in your OCR data book, you've got, um, where is it, you've got this, you've got this, um, these characteristic infrared absorptions in organic molecules. These are basically the frequencies in which the, um, the bonds absorb. Okay, so, say for example, oh, and also, we start off from about 680 or zero, all to up to 4000, and we do not, uh, we don't start from zero to 4000 this way, we do it the opposite way. Okay, this is because, another reason, is because we actually, sometimes in AS chemistry anyway, we don't really look at anything below 1000, because this is called the fingerprint region. Fingerprint region. And this is all just like a whole mess and a whole bundle of um, bonds just bending uh, very messily. So these ones are like, these ones are split. These ones are not split, but they're more easily identifiable, shall we say. Okay, because usually these will just, just squiggle along all like that all the time. And it's really hard to pick out the, um, uh, the bonds there. That's why for really, really, really complex molecules, we use mass spectrometry. Okay, so um, back to the frequency. Usually, again, uh, I got this from the internet. Uh, usually, the transmittance would be 90%, 80%, 70%, not 0 0.7. These are just in decimals, it doesn't really matter. Um, as I might not have explained before, the transmittance is the amount of infrared radiation that passes the sheet of the compound after all all of its absorption. It's like the gold foil experiment, I think, um, which, I, which was like GCSC and I hated it. So, we're gonna have a look, we're gonna have a little look. We're gonna have a little look with our OCR friend here. And, oops, sorry. And we have here, we've got uh, all the bonds here and the wave numbers in which they reside in. These are all estimates because they are never, there's not an exact frequency for it or a wave number for it. The the same thing. Um, they don't really have the correct the same uh, the same of it because is this thing? Yeah, because um, of all different conditions and so on and so forth. So, oh, uh, apologies if that wasn't recording. I'm not entirely sure if it did record. So I have to wait. Um, so we're gonna have a look. We're gonna have a little look. Uh, Ethanol. We know that ethanol, one of the functional groups in there, is a hydroxyl group. And remember, hydroxyl groups are the OH groups. These are not called the alcohol groups, they're called the hydroxyl groups. And the hydroxyl groups, with my, uh, with, with help from here, uh, which is over um, OH, which is over here, it's from 2,500 to 3,300, and it's very broad. So ha let's have a look from 2,000, see I can't remember it now, from 2,500 to 3,000. Uh, I'd say that was kind of, I'd say that that was broad. 
okay considering relative to what is actually looking for 2500 to 3000 um 2200 400 600 800 uh, i would say that was kind of broad so this dignifies and the transition at uh, the transmittance is very low as well it's nearly at zero if not at zero that means a lot of um uh, a lot of infrared radiation has been absorbed at 3000 um centimeters to five minus one so that means we've got an oh group here and we've also got um what's it carbon to carbon bonds and carbon to hydrogen bonds and as you can see here carbon to hydrogen bonds are from 2850 to 3100 this is why we need to be careful because they're actually on the same they're on the same path shall we say and the reason the way to distinguish that from a c to h bond um and a o to h is that the o to h has to be very broad i mean i apologize that this is not the broadest of the broad but it is a bit broad usually if it is the c to h it would just look like it's just going to look like that okay over over here it's going to look like that it's going to be relatively narrower than the oh so this is this is what usually what um alcohol groups look like in the infrared spectra and for carbolixic acids i still can't say it properly to be honest um with a little friend um, with, little, with a little help of our friend carbolixyl acids will always have a c to o and o to h um, bond in it so let's have a look c to o is from 1640 to 1750 1600 40 let's say here yeah this peak over here this is also called a peak i might have not mentioned that's called a peak why did i just do that um this is a c to double bond o over here because that's a very big peak you think about it this is how much um has been absorbed this this is how much has been transmitted um let's say that i don't again um, yeah, this is this is absorbance, okay, but transmittance will be from 100, 50, and 0. So we are saying, okay, under this absorbance graph, we are saying that 98% of that infrared radiation has been, um, from 1640, has been absorbed. Or, if it is in transmittance, this is why you need to be careful and read what um, what the graph is called, it says that 3% of that, or 2%, I can't remember what percentage I gave off, but 2% of it has actually been transmitted, has been passed on, okay, through the security gates, shall we say. Okay, so this is a C to O bond, double bond, and um, an O to H. Let's have a look for O to H. O to H is 3,200 to 3,550. 3,200, hmm, uh, this is this is close this is close enough okay and this is the o to h bond over here okay because this is still broad this is still very broad or if you have a look to th uh, da, 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 um yeah sorry yeah over here i was looking at the wrong one anyway it's from 2500 to 3300 2500 to 3300 i'll say that that's very broad so that means this is an o to h group in the carbolixyl acids okay if it is from 3200 to 3550 it would be an alcohol or a phenol you don't need to know what a phenol is at this current moment so this is what um this is a uh, butanoic acid uh, I think I can't remember it now and the last one uh, for aldehydes and ketones um, we know that aldehydes usually have a C to O bond in the second or third or um, so ketones we talk about and second or third carbon it's usually not on the outside carbons shall we say so it's a, it's a, it's a secondary alcohol or so on and so forth um, <laughs> All produce through oxidation as well. <laughs> um, let's not continue. So, C to O bonds. 
Uh, let's have a look here. C double bond O aldehyde ketones. Yep, yeah, one thousand six hundred and forty. So let's have a look here. One thousand six hundred and forty. I'd say that's around here. Yeah. So this is the C to O bond. This is another key peak. This is a very big peak. Well, because the transmittance of it again should be percentages. I apologize. Um, the what's it? The the peak of it is actually touching zero. So technically, there are no um, all of the all of the um, infrared radiation from 1640 well at this particular point has been absorbed okay or has not been able to pass through the security gates so and this one is also a key peak but as we said if we have a look at it this is a c to h bond over here and it's from 2850 to 3100 as you can see it's right over there and um What's it? So that's a C to H bond. So we know that it's got C to H bonds. We know that it always um, organic chemicals always have compounds, sorry, always have C to H bonds, but it's also got a C to O bond. And since it doesn't have this bit over here, this O to H um, bond here, we know that it's not a carboxylic acid, but it's an aldehyde or a ketone. Remember, aldehydes would usually have the O here um, and ketones would usually have the O here, okay? Would you, would you usually have it in the middle. So what is IR spectrometry used for? We can use it to identify functional groups, as we just looked at, but we can use it for forensic science as well. So for example, you broke into a house and you scratched the paint off the walls, don't, 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 don't ask. They can check your fingernails and they can see that absorbers frequency um, having paints all these emulsions I think paints have got carboxylic acids in I'm not entirely sure and um, we can they'll be able to detect the amount of um, uh, what's it carboxylic acids in your fingernails and the next one is a breathalyzer I mean when you drink alcohol you still got alcohol in your breath because um, since alcohol is in your blood and uh, da, 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 um, what happens is that the and correct me if I'm wrong um, what happens is that the breathalyzer just does this um, IR you know, detection and it actually detects the amount of um, uh, is the amount of absorbance the OH group does and because of that it'll go beep, 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 and you're over 35 you know the legal driving limit and so on and so forth and you get arrested and the last one is analyzing air pollution we know that um, uh, ozone is O3 we can use that knowledge to detect what um, and we've got other things in there like uh, methane and so on and so forth. But we can use that to find out how much um, pollution there is in the area. And that is it for infrared spectrometry.